Now the important thing to understand about forces is that force or forces on an object can cause the object to accelerate. We've already said that if the forces are balanced, the net force is zero. So if you're standing here on the floor, and there's the downward force of gravity, we looked at this earlier, and the upward force from the floor, those two forces are going to be equal and opposite under ordinary circumstances and you won't move in that case. You're not going to accelerate upward as a result of this force because the weight down is pulling you down and you're not going to go falling down through the floor because of the, because of the weight there because assuming the floor is built properly the floor will hold you up. Those forces are balanced, they're balanced so there's no net force the object won't accelerate. In this case you won't accelerate. But if there is a net force, or if the forces are unbalanced, and that term unbalanced would just be used to describe one of these forces being larger than the other. Or you might have more than two forces, but they don't cancel each other out. So the forces are unbalanced. In other words, there is a net force. In that situation, the object will accelerate as a result of those forces. And that's the key concept, that forces cause something to accelerate. And you should be able to understand that very easily, because that should completely match your everyday experience. And that's one of the great things about physics in general is you can understand it down to the very core concepts because it fits with what you already know about the world just from living and moving around in this world. Now if you have forces acting on an object and they cause it to accelerate, it's the net force that matters. The net force is the one you need to think about when you're, when you're trying to figure out how an object is going to move or how it's going to accelerate. So here's an example of an object accelerating as a result of a force. Suppose you have a catapult like they might use to besiege an enemy castle or something like that. And it's on these wheels so they can roll it up to where they need to be. And there's some kind of mechanism, some kind of large spring mechanism over here at one end. And, and then the arm of the catapult with this bucket up here that they would put a big stone in to hurl at the enemy. So a primitive catapult might just have a, a rope tied right here and I'm fastened in rope tied right there fastened down so it's tied and then they put something in the in the bucket here. We'll, um, we'll put a person in there just for kicks. Okay so then there's an object here and right now the forces are balanced there's the downward force of gravity and there's the force of the catapult bucket holding the person up so there's no acceleration then when some someone comes along and cuts the rope then the catapult launches so we'll draw it again over here and here's the spring mechanism that pulls and the thing swings around and so this large force gets exerted on the person as a result of that. And so the person gets accelerated and it's the force that pushes them that causes them to accelerate or in a, a rock in this case if you're actually besieging the castle. Obviously don't try this at home. Now I said a minute ago that when forces cause an object to accelerate that it's the net force that matters. So let's uh, look at an example where the net force comes into play in a little bit more apparent manner. Here's an elevator. Elevators are rectangular like this or square and there's two forces. There's going to be the tension up and then the weight down. Now notice how I've drawn this. My arrow representing the tension force upward is larger. This is the tension in the cable. There's typically a cable pulling the elevator up and it's hooked into the motors and the pulleys and everything. But there's a cable pulling the elevator up and then gravity is obviously pulling the, the elevator down. And I've drawn the tension larger or longer in this case. The longer arrow represents a larger force. The tension is greater than the weight. And Let's just take note of that. T in this case is greater than the weight. So there's a net force upward. 
and that's what would cause the elevator to accelerate upward. And you would have to calculate this if you knew, for example, that there was a tension of, let's say, 5,000 pounds upward and the weight, downward weight of uh, 3,500 pounds. In this case, there would be a net force of 1,500 pounds upward. And that's the force, the 1,500 pounds upward, the net force. That's the force you would consider in trying to decide how this elevator is going to accelerate as a result of those two forces. Now, if an elevator needs to come down, and clearly elevators need to come down, there's still the weight pulling down. And let's suppose that it's um, still 3,500 pounds, same elevator in order to get the elevator to come down they don't push it down you don't need to apply any force downward to get an elevator to move down all you need to do is relax the tension in the cable a little bit so let's say let's say they relaxed the tension so it's now only pulling up with a force of three thousand pounds and notice i've drawn that that arrow a little bit shorter than the weight the tension is now less than the weight so it's a shorter arrow well, if there's 3,000 pounds pulling up and 3,500 pulling down, you should be able to see that there's a net force of 500 pounds downward. That's the number. That's the key number to use in deciding how this elevator is going to accelerate as a result of those two forces. In this case, I'll write the tension is less than the weight. So there's a net force downward. and as a result the elevator accelerates downward. One more example here imagine pulling a boat trailer behind your car so let's say here's the trailer just a big platform basically and, um, and here's your car or truck Okay, not a great truck, but you get the idea. There's a trailer hitch, and the trailer's hooked on, and then the boat sits up here on the trailer, like this. Maybe put a motor on the back. Okay, let's think about the forces. There's a lot of forces in here, but we're, gonna, we're going to think about the forces on the boat. So here are the forces on the boat. Obviously, the trailer is pulling it forward. So we'll just draw a forward force on the boat, or the, the truck is pulling forward. And we'll call that F. And then gravity is certainly pushing down. There's the weight. We'll say W for weight. That's the force down due to gravity. And then the road is holding the thing up. So I'll just say the force of the road. And I'll write F subscript road. Okay, now let's think about how the trailer is going to move here. Well, obviously the, the, the car pulls forward, the boat moves forward. But what you want to do if you're thinking about this mathematically is you realize that the force of the road is going to be equal and opposite the force of the weight. So those two effectively cancel out. And then if you have this force pulling forward, that's what's left. So your net force will be the force forward from the truck. Now you could also consider friction. There's friction opposing the motion. Nothing sl slides across the road with perfect ease. Um, friction pulling back here we could draw as a little f. And if you want to make the trailer accelerate forward you need to put in a force f here, big F, that's bigger than the force of friction. And what would what would come into play here would be the net force. The force of the road and the weight are always going to cancel each other out, so we can ignore those. They're equal and opposite, or you can think of them as adding up to zero. So because they cancel out, we can essentially ignore them. And we can consider the force of the truck pulling forward and friction pulling back. And if we think of this, the force pulling forward is positive, and the friction pulling backward is negative, we simply add them up and find the net force. Add up a positive number and a negative number and find the net force. The net force is what's going to count 
when we're trying to figure out the acceleration of the boat trailer.